and Paul I know. <laughs> but who are you? <laughs> then a man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. This became known to both all the Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them that totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Praise God. Amen. For my text, I want you to find a neighbor real quick. Amen. This is one of those neighbor sermons. This one of those, uh, tell, tell your neighbor, I know I make this look easy. I know I make this look easy. But don't try this on your own. Don't try this on your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It don't make sense. I know it don't make sense right now. I know. I know I make it look easy. Amen. But you have no idea about the christening power. You have no idea about the Holy Ghost anointing on the inside. You don't know what it costs me to do what I do, how I do, like I do when I do. What I do, how I do it, and when I you have no idea. <laughs> hey, man, if that doesn't resonate with you, turn to your other neighbor and ask you, who are you? Who are you? Wait for an answer. Wait for an answer. Hey, man, wait for an answer. Wait, 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 wait for an answer. Wait, wait, wait for them to answer. Who are you? Paul, I know. Jesus, I even know. But Father, we thank you for this time. We ask you, dear Lord, to maximize this time. Speak to us out of the volume of your holy book, words of life, clarity, authority, and conviction. Father God, we stand at the ready to receive the infallible truth in your word today. Feed us to a spiritually satisfied. Feed us until lives have been changed, healed, delivered, and set free. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, ushers, for your kind and friendly service. Thank you, Aunt Fair. I appreciate you. Amen. 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 Who you got? Bring me that power. Oh, Thank you. You are anointed to live this life. There is an anointing on your life that cannot be quantified or qualified by any measurable means. The anointing of God is not in your life to be served, but God anoints you to serve others and to fulfill God's agenda. The anointing, uh, beloved, is an enabler, the enabling power that empowers and quickens you to function at a capacity that you would not otherwise be able to function if you were not anointed to do so. Now, the anointing, beloved, causes misjudgments and misassessments by people about you because when they see you doing things under the anointing of God, you make it look easier than what it actually is. Mm -hmm. Because anointed people make, eat, make things look easy when in reality, God just added super to your natural and caused you to do supernatural things. Mm -hmm. Don't ever get your anointing confused with your strength because your strength ends where God's anointing begins. There are certain things we can do under our own power, but things for the kingdom of God and things for uh, the people of God has to be driven by the anointing of God. Also, but be careful that you don't see others operating in the anointing and think you can imitate or duplicate what it is you see them do. Pray God. Because God has an anointing for your life. God has an anointing for your life. God has an anointing for your life. And I can't duplicate what God wants to do in your life with my anointing. Mm -hmm. Your anointing requires a specific results come that what, from what God has given you. So I can watch how you walk. I can watch how you talk. I can model myself after you. But if God doesn't drop that anointing in me, I'll just be a puppet playing Simon Says and doing what I saw you do but not get the results that God said that you would get. Praise God. Watch this. Number one, watch for givers, seekers, and takers. As you are trying to flow in the anointing, it will draw people to you. It will draw givers, 
that will give to your anointing. It will draw seekers, people that want something out of your anointing, and it will draw takers, those that just want you to enable them and drain you dry and then move on to the next anointed person. Mm -hmm. In my text, the Apostle Paul was operating under a heavy anointing. This anointing he was operating under was so heavy that the Bible said that his shadow and even his handkerchief was causing people to be healed. Mm -hmm. The anointing was so heavy that people came from miles around and they brought people to Paul to experience this anointing that was in his life. So truly anointed people would draw the attention of other people so that they can experience the anointing that's in your life. Have you ever wondered why you attract such attention from people? Have you ever wondered why people always want to be around you and it seems as though you are drawing negative attention? You are drawing the attention of that person that always gets on your nerve. Or you are drawing the attention of God keeps putting you in places that's broken because he wants the anointing you carry to fix that situation. So when you go to work tomorrow, those of you that work, look at it in a different light. It may be broken because you're the wrench or the screwdriver that God wants to put in place to fix that thing. God may be putting people around you that get on your nerves to the third degree, but God wants you to be the one that causes healing to abound in their life. But as you are attempting to flow in the anointing, watch out for givers, seekers, and takers. Givers will find a reason to give unto you. You won't know why. They will, they will invest in your life. They'll invest in who you are. Seekers will seek to be healed by what you have. All right, all right. Well, watch all right. this. Takers will only be there to drain your anointing. To drown you in the sea of enablement. Takers, watch this, givers should have a limit because takers don't. <laughs> I'm going to make my sense to you. If you are a giver and you're anointed to give, have to have some type of limit. Because the person that takes from you won't have any type of limit. They'll take and they'll take and they'll take and then when your well runs dry, they'll find somebody else that's anointed to give and they will. I must not be in church today or, you, or you, you must not understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. Or you might just need to say, ouch. <laughs> Paul was walking in a heavy anointing. This anointing was so heavy that the, it drew the attention of the seven sons of Sceva. Mm -hmm. They were the sons of a Jewish priest who didn't even believe in Jesus as the Christ. They didn't know the Christ, but they were attracted to the christening power of Christ. They thought if we could just imitate what he did, we could have that power. But the anointing can't be imitated or duplicated. Either you have it or you don't. Either you're anointed to do it or you're not. But the indicator that you are anointed is the drawing that people come to you. You want to know what you're anointed to do? Watch how people are drawn to you. Watch what type of people are drawn to you. That will indicate the anointing in the ministry God wants you to walk in. So don't get mad when your anointing get, draws attention. Don't get upset when your anointing draws the worst of the worst. Don't get upset when, when you are anointed to do something and people get jealous because you're anointed to do what God called you to do. There are some people that are anointed and they didn't get any teaching, any tutelage. They didn't go to school for it, but God just dropped it in their spirit and all of a sudden they know how to do what they know how to do. I tell you, any day of the week, I'd rather preach than to step on any of those instruments over there. Because God didn't put it in my fingers to do what they do. And if they were to give a testimony, they'd tell you that God did it. Even if they had a little bit of schooling, God put music in their soul and music in their spirit. And if you say a song, they can pick it up right there on the spot because they have that melody in their heart. Somebody say, that's a gift. That's a gift. I say, that's a precious gift. That's a precious gift from God. So don't be mad or jealous when you're operating at a grace that somebody else is not operating in. Each and every one of us has a grace, has a ministry, has an anointing that God will require us to walk in. Instead of watching what other people do, ask God, what do you want me to do? Amen. Somebody say that real quick. God, what do you want me to do? Amen. Say it again. God, what do you want me to do? 
Amen. You ask like God is going to answer. Now the trick is when he answers, be ready to receive and do what he told you to do. Oh, yeah, that was a setup. That was a setup. That's what I told you to say it twice. When you ask God what do you want me to do, God will say, man, I'll tell you what I want you to do. But in your mind, don't ask with your mindset, God, what do you want me to do? And you say, well, God, I want you to, I want, you to want me to preach. I want you to want me to sing. I want you to want me to play. Come on, clear your mind and say, Lord, the will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> and then when God answers, don't get upset when God said, well, I want you to start by sweeping the church floors. Don't get upset when the Lord starts with, I want you to be your pastor's armor bearer, or I want you to be the elder's armor bearer, or I need you to clean the toilets for about two months. Or, I need you to open up the door. Don't get mad when God gives you a giving ministry. Uh -huh. When God puts poor people on your heart and says, pay for that gas, pay for that grocery, put something together. Don't get mad when God gives you a ministry that ain't on the front line. You say, Lord, tell me what to do. In your mind, you got a microphone in your hand. But you don't know the cost of what it takes to be a minister in the house of God. You don't know the suffering, the late midnight hours, the pain and the crying. Yeah, you can tell you the hope. You can tell you the ask God, what you want me to do? He sing that song, Send Me Our Go. We see the other song, I'll go if I gotta go. Oh, did you really mean it though? If I gotta go by myself. Number two, so I can get out of your way. Victory is not as simple as it looks. Victory, beloved, is a mixture of successes, defeats, hurts, pain, exuberance, depression, Sometimes feeling like a champ, sometimes feeling like a chump. The truth is, victory is complicated. It's not as easy as it looks, it's not as easy as it seems. And truth be told, people be walking in victory and we have no idea. Because you can be walking in victory, still hurting from what it took to get to victory. Hello, y'all ain't here. What a, have, you, have you ever overcome something? But we're still wounded by what you had to overcome. You thought that if I could just get through this, I'm going to sing, dance, and pray, but you stumbled through it. And now you're on the other side trying to get yourself back together. You got the victory, but everybody looking at you don't know you got the victory. And you don't run in church all the time saying, I'm victorious. I paid my bills. I came to it to the doctor, and he said, I'm here. Watch this. We celebrate people once they get the victory. However, we demonize people while they're going through mm, to get to the victory. Why is it that we wait to celebrate people after we see victory? When they're going through is the time they need to be celebrated. Once they get through, it's between them and God. It don't even matter what you say once I get my breakthrough. Have you ever seen somebody get a breakthrough and it seems like they're trying to tear the whole church down? Have you ever seen somebody get a real breakthrough? And no matter how much you talk to them, it don't matter what you say to them, they stand up, they cry, they throw their hands up, they run around the church up. They got to say, I got the victory. I don't need endorsements or support to walk in with God. such a heavy anointing that it looked simple to the sons of Stephen. Yes, when they looked at him, they said, well, he, he said come out by the name of Jesus. That looks simple enough. They didn't understand you can't have victory without warfare. You can't have healing without sickness. You can't have deliverance without decay. And you can't have success without sorrow. What happened, they came in on the tail end of Paul's career. That's right. They came in on the tail end of his ministry. Somebody say after. after. After he had gone through some terrible times, they were seeing the results of a seasoned life. The sons of Stephen were seeing the results 
of Paul in his seasoned ministry. Sometimes we want a shortcut to what it took other people years to build up. Sometimes we want to just get there. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to strive. We don't want to contend for the faith that was once delivered to us. Anybody ever wanted the easy way out? I know y'all y'all too holy to say yeah. I already know my hands. Sometimes I, I say, Lord, give me the easy way out. I just suffered last week. Why well, gotta suffer for this one too? And sometimes we want the easy way out, and but it's sometimes it takes for you to long suffer through it. So gee, you don't always learn the lesson on the first day. You don't always learn the lesson on the first week of your go through. You don't always learn the lesson on the first month of your go through. Sometimes we get hard headed and God has to allow it to linger for a little bit before we can say, Lord, now I see. Mm -hmm. Lord, I learned my lesson. Now I understand what you were doing all this time. But sometimes we want to take the easy way out. If I could just go a little bit deeper, sometimes somebody, people are going through their go through and we give them the easy way out. Uh, be, uh, be careful how you enable something God got his hands on. I know we're supposed to give, give, and give, and give, but be careful that you don't become an enabler for something that God is trying to get them to walk through for themselves. I know that ain't easy to hear and understand, but sometimes their go through is necessary. Somebody say necessary. Because the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 10, after you suffer a while, he will perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Some seven sons of Steve are oversimplified Paul's anointing. They oversimplified and said, it can't be that easy. He just walked up to the man, laid hands on him, and the demon came out. He was so anointed that, that, that people were trying to get in his shadow and trying to get his handkerchief and trying to get close to him so they could be healed. They said it can't be that easy. So we're going we to take the short route to it. We ain't going to give our lives to the Lord and suffer and learn. We're just going to quote the name of Jesus. How many know the name of Jesus is not witchcraft? How many know you can't call on the name of Jesus and expect him to move like a genie in a lamp? That if you call his name, he looks to see if he's in your heart. If he's not in your heart, you can call his name all day long. But if you can't call the name of Jesus and expect him to be the maker of your miracles and the keeper of your secrets, you got to know who he is when you call on his name. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in understanding who he is. There's power in knowing that he is your Lord and your Savior. But they said, we're going to call the name like Paul did and see if it gets us some results. Coincidentally, the handkerchief thing, this is where people of God get taken advantage of today, that people use this premise uh, to go to the river and, and, and put some water in a bottle, put a fancy wrap around it, and say, this came from the springs of Jerusalem, so if you give me twelve ninety nine dollars for 12 months, you're going to get the blessings of Abraham. People are selling handkerchiefs that were supposed to be anointed handkerchiefs. And some people buy the handkerchiefs thinking that if they rub that handkerchief on their husband, he's going to come home at night. If they rub that handkerchief on their wife, she's going to start acting right. But how many know if God going to put it in their heart? You can buy the well, the spring, the river, the fall, and the handkerchief. But God has to come on the inside. There is there is no price for the anointing. The only person that paid for the anointing is the person that carries. Tell your neighbor, don't buy no more of that old. Oh, that was the wrong neighbor. We want to hit the house somewhere. Tell your other neighbor, don't buy no more of that spring water. You need some spring water to buy, come to 120 Kenneth Boulevard. I'll fill up a whole two liter and give it to you. You got to be careful how we, people tell me you need to sow in my anointing. You need to sow in my anointing to get them what I have. You ain't got to sow into the anointing. You sow into good ground. When you go shit that up, when you sow into good ground, then God will bless the ground you sow in. You ain't to give the prophet the prophet's reward. But true prophets, true men and women of God, don't come with their hand out. Say, I preach this message. Some of what I just say. No, baby. If I preach it, I preach it God told me to preach. If you decide to sow, 
you try to sell, that's what God put on your heart to do. But I can't come and say, this is the price uh, for the prophecy I just gave you. This is the price uh, for the word I just gave you. Show it to my anointing, but God ain't going to do it. Uh, if God said it, uh, God going to do it. Uh, if God said it, uh, take him at his word. Uh, you ain't got to pull out a dime. Uh, you ain't got to pull out a dollar. Uh, you ain't got to swap your card. Uh, Are you the one? I wait for somebody. I 
Are, are you on? Okay, there we go. I, I searched all over. I couldn't find nobody. Are you the one? Okay. Are you the one? Okay, I was just wondering. I thought I was in church. Are you the one? God was looking for somebody. Are you the one? Are you the one? Okay. Are you the one? God is looking for just one person. And to be honest with you, it just takes a little kindling to start a big fire. Uh, the best fires get started with dry wood. You see, oh, y'all missed it. When people are dry, when service is dry, when the atmosphere is dry, all you need is for somebody to come into the church on fire. They ain't care how the service is. They don't care what's going on. They say it's dry in here. But I got the anointing of God. I'm going to dance until it catch on fire. I'm going to holler until it catch on fire.
you can't carry that dead weight to the next level. So you're, some of you are right at the very edge, the cusp of what God really wants to do in your life, and he's waiting for you to cut some dead weight. Somebody say, cut that weight. Cut that weight. Cut that dead weight. He's waiting for you to cut that dead weight because you can't take it to your next move. And God is patient. He'll wait until you are tired of waiting to go to the next place. So don't be discouraged. Because Paul was walking by himself. All the people that were with him were givers, seekers, or takers. Then he had the seven sons of Stephen that were coming to take something they didn't earn. Mm. So my next point, I believe this is my last point. Tell your neighbor, go hard. Go hard. Or go home. Go Y'all didn't mean it. Y'all didn't mean it. Y'all were scared to say it. Were you scared to say it? Go hard. Go hard. Or go home. Go hard. Amen. Tell your other neighbor, I mean that. I mean that go home or go home. If you read the text carefully, those seven sons were following Paul for a season. It looks like they were just following behind him, taking notes as to what he did. They were just following him and saying, I see he did that and it came out. I see he did that. They were taking notes. That mean they were taking notes of what Paul was doing and they were following down behind him as he went forth to do the will of God. And it seemed as though they were trying to duplicate or repeat the anointing that Paul carried. Well, watch this. One day they ran upon some spirits, and the spirits answered them. One day, they, they kept, it looked like they just kept saying, in the name of Jesus, come out, in the name of Jesus. And one day, the spirits got tired of them faking the funk. So the oh, spirits will rock with you for a minute. Until, until it's time for them to call your butt out. That's so be right. careful how you lay with demons and try to play with demons because they just buying their time because sooner or later there's going to be a one day experience that's going to be truth or consequence for all those that are playing church, all those that ain't really about it. You can play with them demons now but sooner or later they're going to call you out and these seven sons of Sceva kept playing around with these spirits and then they got tired of them playing with them. Amen. I can imagine they said, he coming around here one more time, man. His fake hand on my forehead. All right. Y'all ain't never said that right. before. I know him, man. I know him in church. He coming around here one more time. I ain't feel a thing when he came to pray for me. Y'all ain't never said that before. Now let me move on, y'all. Y'all be real holy. <laughs> there came a one day for those sons. There's coming a day for each and every one of us. If you have not had it, keep on living and you will. It's coming a day when you'll have to believe in God. I'm not talking about belief in God, but believe in God. Belief in God is belief that He exists. Believe in God, you can even accept him as Lord and Savior, but to believe in God is to believe he's in the situation with him. Oh, there's faith and then there's the faith. The faith is in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Faith is that though I go through, God is going through with me. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Believing in God is different than belief. One day you're going to have to stand by yourself. Somebody say, been there, done that. Yeah. One day you're going to have to prove all things, hope against all things, and bear all things. You're going to have to stand, therefore, with your loins girt about with truth. You're going to have to trust God when you can't track God. You're going to have to believe Him when you can't see Him. There's coming a day that you're going to have to discern more than what you see. It's coming a day because God never allows you to graduate to the next level until you have been found proficient on this level. Yeah. I don't know who you are, but somebody in here today, you're ready for the next level. You're very on the cusp of going higher. You're on the very verge of doing better, but God is waiting for you to want it bad enough. Oh, uh, ask your neighbor, how bad do you want it? How bad? Oh, you didn't ask 
in there. He's scared of it. Ask your neighbor, how bad do you want it? How, how bad? You got to want it bad enough to cut the TV on. You got to want it bad enough to, to, to tell your friends, I can't go out tonight because I got to get in my word. You got to want it bad enough to, to, to not go to KFC after every Sunday service, put that money in the savings account. Oh, that ain't good preaching, but that's good living. You, you, you got to want it bad enough uh, not to rebuke the fat in the pound cake, but don't eat the pound cake. Mm -hmm. You got to want it bad enough to tell that boy, uh, you ain't got to be home by 9. Uh, you got to be home by 8.59 and 59 seconds. Uh, if you want it bad enough, you got to pray for your children. Pray for your If you want it bad enough, you do whatever it takes to get the will of the Lord done. Sometimes we talk. We got good talk game. Come on. But we don't put our feet to walking when right. our mouths started talking. That's right. The thing about the sons of Stephen, they tried. They said, we're going to do this. Paul looked like he's going to been through something. Because they were coming in at the tail end of Paul's ministry. So I'm sure by that time, he was hunched over a little bit. And he, was, he, was, he didn't look like the spry young Paul that started off killing Christians. So he probably looked a little bit like what he went through. Right. So he said, I don't know if I want to go through what he went through to get what he got. So I'm going to take the shortcut to get to what he got. That's the text. But in reality, there's some of you in here today that have been through H-E double L and high water. But tell your neighbor, I don't look like you. I don't look like you. I've been through it, but I don't look like you. If you know what I've been through, you would think I would be blind, crippled, and crazy. But God let me go through it and God preserved me for a certain time like this. Oh, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying to you. That if, if we were to have testimony service and people testify about what God brought them through, huh, we'd be, our jaws would drop huh, just from the first testimony. If they were to get up and say, I've been through this and I've been through that and the doctor said that, but look at what God has done. If I were to give people Microphone, uh, and he tell you how the doctor thought he was gone. Uh, that how he had something going on with his heart. Uh, went to the doctor for something else. Uh, but God said, you going for this. Uh, but I'm going to show you that. Uh, but here he is, let him get the prayer. Uh, and God delivered him out of what the doctor said. And I can tell you, just for a moment, just, just for a moment, just for a moment, if I could point out my sister Joanna, you see her standing and praising God while the half the rest of the church was sitting down, sitting in high class. Oh, I ain't even doing, I ain't giving praise today. She stood up. You don't even know what she just came through. You don't know what the doctor said about her. You don't understand she had oxygen last week. But she still stood up and said, Oh, God, somebody. Oh, I, 
put you in the right place. Let me finish the text and we're going to pray. They jumped on the demons. Say about the, 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 the Jesus which Paul the Jew, I, I command you to come out. Then the demon said, look, we don't have enough of this. I said, look at that Paul I know. He just passed by because I, I know he got an anointing. Because I can still feel it. I, I thought he was coming my way. I was about to jump out before he got me. Oh. Paul I know. Jesus I know. But who are you? What are you doing? Why are you trying to cast something out you just got finished playing with? A kingdom divided against itself can't stand. Right. Right. And this is a roll call. I got to say what God told me, I'm going to sit down. This is a roll call for preachers, ministers, deacons, elders, musicians, ushers, saints, and friends. This is a roll call. God is saying, get on or get off. And to get on is not being perfect, but to get on is to throw your heart in the ring. That, that's what that means. Get on and give God another chance. Throw your whole heart in the ring. Either be hot. Okay, you understand? This is a roll call. Because nobody wants that day. Nobody wants that day to happen. You've been playing all this time and you fooled all the church people. You even fooled your preacher. You fooled everybody, but you have that day. That day is going to happen. And if your heart ain't pure, if your heart ain't right before God, you're going to leave there like those sons, naked and ashamed. Uncovered, stripped down, Nothing to say except for man. I'm a messed up. That day is coming. And I'm not trying to call out anything. I'm just saying, put your heart on the line and God gives grace. That's what I'm saying. Put your heart in it and God has grace for it. If you say, Lord, I'm imperfect, I ain't got it all together, but I love you. Lord, I'm not perfect. I ain't got it all together, but I want to serve you. Lord, I'm not perfect. I ain't got it all together, but my heart is in it. And for the love of everything, stop saying the Lord knows my heart. As an excuse not to do better. Because if you get there before the throne and say, well, Lord, you knew my heart, he said, yep, here it is. <laughs> That's right. Don't, say that. Don't, don't use that when it comes to doing better. Go ahead and say, Lord, you know I need you. Yes. Yes. That should be our prayer today. Lord, I need you. Yes, Lord. So what happened is they jumped on the demons. The demons jumped back on them. They left naked and ashamed and everybody saw what was going on and gave God praise and so much that the witches and warlocks in that town bought their books to be burned. So I'm going I'm to cap it with this. God is about to do something so awesome, so unusual, so extraordinary, so spectacular that Simon the sorcerer's grip is going to be loosed over this region. God is about to do something so different, so unusual, so extraordinary, so spectacular that people are going to come from miles around to experience what God is doing right here. God is about to do something so extraordinary, so unusual, so peculiar, so particular that ministries are going to be birthed out of this church. Songwriters, beat makers, singers, producers, lawmen, politicians, Musicians, 
preachers, pastors, bishops, and apostles. Coming right up, right up out of Sweet 925. Great men and women of God will be birthed in this ministry, in this hour. And witches and warlocks and demons and spiritual wickedness that sit in high places are gathering right now in their attempt to strategize warfare against this church. They're strategizing right now how to get the pastor to fall. They're strategizing right now how to have all within the ministry. They're strategizing right now how to close this church before we even get on our feet. So you see, there ain't no more time for that cute stuff. Come on, that's right. That's right. We ain't got no more time to be playing patty cake with the enemy. All right. That enemy you playing patty cake with is out to destroy you. Because you carry the name that's above all names. He's out to destroy you because God has prophesied over this place. And he wants you to be the one that takes it all down. Don't let it be you. Don't let it don't let it be you. There is such a stanty feet, stanty feet. There is such a strong anointing. And the thing about that anointing is you can't even fathom or imagine how strong it is. So I challenge you today when we come into this house, don't just get your praise on and see the baby sitting there wishing they were somewhere else. Don't just come to get your breakthrough when the babies are sitting there can't wait for service to be over. Use all that anointing you got and minister to them babies. Don't make time. You ain't got nothing but time. Use some of that oil you're using to keep yourself safe. And whisper in that baby's ear, God loves you anyway. Because if not, we are in fear of duplicating an old anointing. And if we duplicate what has already been done, we should have stayed where we were. God didn't call us out to duplicate what he already did. He called us out because there's something peculiar, different about us. So I challenge you, each and every one of you, you got an anointing to bring to the table when you come. I challenge you, babies, you got something to offer and to bring when you come. If service doesn't fit your needs, come holler at me. Come talk to me. We'll, we'll do whatever it takes to have a total worship experience. I said, grown ups gonna get their praise on anyhow. If we can figure the service so that the grown folks get their praise, we miss it more. Because after a certain amount of time, you don't need a keyboard or drums or church to praise God. If you still need that, something ain't right. Come on, somebody. This ain't good preaching, but this is good living. We cannot come here and do the same thing. Babies falling asleep. Babies hating church. Babies just coming because they're drunk at church. They say, Lord, I can't wait for this. It's over. I got something to do at the church. This is just something I do. When I get older, I ain't going back to church no more. And then we lose. We've already lost two generations. X and C. We can't lose these babies because we're coming to get off our season and our harvest home. Get these babies involved 
in church. If not, we're going to miss the mark. This generation's going to slip away. They're going to come to church. See, the seven sons of Sceva represent religious mindsets. Religious minds. Do what you're told. Do it how it's told. And then just go on and do what you do. God is charging us today, He's chosen. I hope y'all heard what God said. There's warfare coming against this church. I need all my armor bearers to be on post, get on post, stay on post. Call, text, see about a brother. Because there's warfare going on. I need for children to call your sisters, call those you love, call those you don't think you love, see how they're doing. Check on them because there's warfare. I know y'all don't see it. Y'all just happy to have a place to worship. Y'all just happy to be able to come in and lay out before the Lord. But there is a charge to this temple. There's a charge to this church. We can't just come and have a good time and go home. We can't just come and lift up praise and go home. There's a charge to this church. We've been duly notified. We've been put on notice.
We ask for you to move in a mighty way. Everything that is needed in the house, supply all of our needs according to your riches. That's in glory. Heart to heart, mind to mind, soul to soul, spirit to spirit. We petition you today, God. We petition you for healing, deliverance, restoration. We petition you today, God, to do something you have not done before. We ask a special prayer, Father God, for our babies, our children, our youth, and our young adults. Help them, God. They suffer with mental depression and don't know how to handle the anxiety in which they feel. So they act out in ways that we call being bad, Father God, but it's really, they're needing the supernatural enablement of the Holy Ghost. So teach us how to minister to these babies. Teach them about who you are and it ain't about the grown folks. Teach us collectively and individually as we strive and endeavor to be the call of chosen vessels, royal priesthood, holy nation, called out of darkness into your marvelous light, who are not a people, but are now your people. Strengthen us from the inside out. We'll be careful to glorify your magnificent, marvelous, matchless name. We love you today. We bless your name. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say